In Brazil, the Supreme Federal Court resumes the appeal trial that discusses the implementation of the so-called temporary framework that affects rights and restricts the marking of indigenous lands. Hurricane Idalia has now downgraded to Category 1 as it left the U.S. state of Florida and moves into Georgia. And in Gabon, the new military authorities announced that the head of the country's elite Republican Guard would lead the Central African country. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from Adresso Studios in Havana, Cuba. We'll begin with the news. Brazil's Supreme Federal Court will resume the appeal trial that discusses the implementation of the so-called temporary framework that affects rights and restricts the marking of indigenous lands. The court will be analyzing the sentence that will define the future of the indigenous peoples, which establishes that the natives have the right to possessions traditionally occupied by them. In this sense, if this reform is approved, the native peoples will only be able to reclaim the areas occupied up to that date. According to the National Council of Justice, there are 226 cases suspended in the lower courts of the judicial branch awaiting a decision on the matter. The thesis of the temporal framework seeks to prevent the demarcation of indigenous lands, which is a procedure that declares the tenure of the land they inhabit as a right of the original people. In this sense, indigenous people are mobilizing against the legal proposal of the temporal type. They demand the reality of their history and their culture while denouncing the demarcation of patrimonies in addition to the violation of economic pro projects. There are senators from the southern region saying that marking off indigenous lands in Brazil affects the economy. This is a lie. It does affect the environment not to mark them off. It affects climate change, it affects global warming, and it affects all future generations of the world. There is only one planet and only one Mother Earth because it is on her that we are producing and she's also given us. Because she produces, she gives water, she gives fruit and she gives air. We don't want her to die because if she dies, we will die too. But we will not die because we will live to fight against that. Come on people, no to the time frame. Let's get together and defend our home. We must not change our land because of the time frame and the crimes that are being Imploded in the Senate. They want to implement those crimes in our lands, and that will not happen because we are going to fight. The land is life. In Guatemala, legislative authorities disowned deputies of the Semilla movement of President elect Bernardo Arevalo. The legislature recognized them as an independent group. Parliament's board of directors determined that the current five lawmakers of Samilla, including the president-elect himself, will no longer be a legislative bloc in the Congress of the Republic. The decision comes amid the start of a criminal investigation into alleged qualities in the party's formation process in 2017. In this respect, spokespersons for the party denounced that the action is carried out without any basis. In Chile, President Gabriel Boric authorized a new national search plan ahead of the 50th anniversary of the coup that toppled the government and led to the disappearance and killing of thousands. The measure marks the first time since the end of the Pinochet regime that the Chilean government has tried to find those who went missing, an effort that until now has largely fallen to the surviving family members, mainly women, who protested when on hunger strikes and took their cases to court. The plan will centralize the, and digitize the enormous volumes of judicial case and other archives scattered across government agencies and human rights organizations. Using a special software to cross-reference information, it will also finance the exploration of sites where victims may be buried or where excavations have been pending for years because of a lack of funding. In Haiti, the U.S. Embassy called on U.S. citizens to leave the country as soon as possible amid the recent escalation of violence. According to an official statement, U.S. citizens should leave the territory by commercial or private transport or take charter options offered by different airlines. The call comes given the current security situation and infrastructure challenges. The U.N. reports that escalating gun warfare in Haiti has led to a devastating humanitarian crisis with a need for humanitarian aid.
for Venezuelan oil prices fell, a group of friends left noisy and crowded Caracas for bare plain lands in Yaracuy to raise cattle on the premise that Venezuela has a future. Since that moment, they turned an abandoned land into green crop fields and became self-reliant while helping others. In this new episode of the series Venezuela on the Move, Adriana Sibori and Jesus Romero tells us their story. Let's listen. It's always hot in Venezuela, and these cattle are especially adapted to hot climates. Some are pure breed, known as gear, and others are crossbreeds of two types of cattle, called Girolando. Carlos came to this multifunctional farm years ago. He used to live between buildings and the heavy traffic of the capital city. I didn't know what agriculture was. I was in the suburbs doing masonry work and other things. I met some friends and they invited me to rescue this land. We started planting corn, sweet potatoes, and then little by little we learned about cattle raising because we didn't know anything about that. First we had a cow, then two, and so on. Currently there are 120 animals, 25 of which are exclusively for milking. From them they obtain a very good quantity of milk. This type of work makes them love their land unconditionally. I have met friends who have traveled to Colombia, Peru, Chile, and I have family outside of Venezuela. But I do not change my Venezuela for any other country. Venezuela is Venezuela, and Venezuela has a future. If it's about the future, Frank finds it here. To manage production, they hire more staff according to every season's requirements. Every worker has a salary every day. Being unemployed now is a terrible sin. This cooperative has been created and run by its members who, with the help of their families, have managed to grow crops, including feed for the cattle, while tractors continue at full speed. When we came in here, it was bare and you are already seeing more or less what we have done in 16 years. Whatever is left, we use it for investment. Investments are for a genetic improvement project for small and medium-sized producers. Almost two decades ago, this project started with state financing. We are the same, with oil prices at 100 and with oil prices at zero. At zero, meaning no foreign currencies. Today, in 2023, in spite of the crisis, the blockade, in spite of so many circumstances that have been affecting us here in the country, we are already 100% self-sufficient. Very proud of the work. They tell us that everything produced here contributes to national food security and is also for self consumption. The fields where Las Tres Eras Cooperative is located are part of one of the Venezuelan states that was founded by Ezequiel Zamora in 1859. An independentist that vindicated countrymen's rights. Jesús Romero, Irena Sibori, Telesur, Yaracuy, Venezuela. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates, and much more. All the stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back from the South. The government of Canada reported the finding of at least 93 possible unidentified children's graves in a boarding school for indigenous peoples. Authorities of Saskatchewan, a native town of Canada, confirmed on Tuesday about 79 infantile burial mounds and 14 possible graves of newborns in the surroundings of another Catholic boarding school. In this sense, the local authorities affirmed that after the first investigation, it is expected to find more tombs. Additionally, authorities asked for privacy after their initial revelation and expressed that more details will be revealed in a forthcoming press conference. A U.S. District Judge ruled on Wednesday that Rudy Giuliani, a former lawyer for former President Donald Trump, is legally responsible for defaming two Georgia election workers. They are Ruby Freeman and Chaya Moss, who became the subject of conspiracy theories related to the 2020 election that were amplified by Trump in the final weeks of his presidency. The two sued Giuliani because in December 2021 he made unfounded statements claiming that the duo help commit voter fraud in the state election in November of the previous year. Judge Beryl Howell, in a 57-page ruling, 
tip the scales in favor of the two poll workers by default after Giuliani resisted turning over evidence in the case. The disgraced jurist will also have to pay nearly 90000 to reimburse legal fees incurred by those affected in their attempt to force him to turn over the evidence. In Spain, Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez rejected a proposal for a two-year legislature by the president of the Popular Party, Alberto Núñez Feijó. After their brief meeting between both politicians, Feijó delivered a six-point proposal to Sánchez. The text points out that in view of the risk of repeating elections in four months, the Popular Party offers a mandate of 24 months to undertake the pending reforms for the country in pursuit of the centrality of a government. For their part, the Socialists demanded the renewal of the General Council of the Judiciary before December 31st, independently of who, whoever is elected president of the government. In France, some 2,000 people have been prosecuted on charges of involvement in protests in last June near Paris. French Justice Minister Eric Dupont Moretti claimed in a special interview on Tuesday that out of those prosecuted, over a thousand were found guilty and another 1,789 were sentenced to prison. All were arrested in the context of protests over the murder of Nahel, a 17-year-old French teenager by a policeman. According to the minister, he called for a rapid, firm and systematic response from the magistrates, no justice, because it was a matter of restoring law and order. The Syrian foreign minister said that Damascus is confident that the Iraqi government will not allow the use of that country's territory by the U.S. forces to attack Syria. Syrian Foreign Minister Faisal Magdak made the remarks in a press conference with his Iraqi counterpart, his Iranian counterpart Hossein Amir Abdullahian in Damascus late on Wednesday in response to reporters regarding the presence of U.S. forces in Syria and Iraq. The foreign minister said the U.S. connection between Syria and Iraq and to affect their border connection with Jordan. Baghdad accused Washington of using ISIS as an excuse to organize terrorist groups against his country. No party can block the historical roads that connect the peoples of the region. We advise U.S. leaders to leave the region to its people. All these policies of the United States of America and its Western allies will lead to failure if they keep practicing their actions that are not permitted globally and internationally because they are immoral and inconsistent with international law. We have a heroic army that has proven its capabilities in all arenas of battle with the U.S. and its allies. China defense ban on seafood imports from Japan after Tokyo announced it would file a complaint with World Trade Organization. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Wenmin said that Beijing's measure is indeed legitimate and necessary as it is in accordance with the country's laws and regulations as well as a World Trade Organization agreement. The decision seeks to prevent the risk of radioactive contamination of Japanese aquatic products due to the contaminated water from the Fukushima nuclear power plant. The Asian authorities are sure that they will continue to monitor the water discharge situation and will adjust the measure to protect the health and food safety of its citizens. Hurricane Italia has now downgraded to Category 1 as it left the U.S. state of Florida and moves into Georgia. The storm center moved through southeastern Georgia on Wednesday afternoon and reached Jacksonville. Flash flooding warnings are in effect for this and the East Carolinas. Far more than 278,000 people in Florida and 52,000 in Georgia were reportedly without electricity as of 11.30 a.m. local time. Two people have been reported dead in Florida as Italia passed through that state. For this described the storm and its potentially deadly high surging waters as a once in a lifetime event for the area. The storm came ashore near the community of Keaton Beach, Florida, early Wednesday as Category 3 hurricane. The eye of Hurricane Idalia has left uh, the state of Florida. The state is still being impacted 
by the storm's bands, and we're seeing that particularly in the northern part of the state. Uh, so far, there have been 262,000 uh, accounts uh, that had lost power have been restored, and there are more than 250,000 accounts that are currently out of power and in need of restoration. We have a second short break coming up, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel at Tresor English, where you'll be able to rewatch our interviews, top stories, special broadcastings, and more. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's most recent events. Found short break, don't go away. Welcome back from the South. On Wednesday, military soldiers in Gabon announced that the head of the country's elite Republican Guard will lead the Central African country. The coup leader said in an announcement on Gabon State TV that General Bryce Clotaire Oligui had been unanimously designated by President of the Committee for the Transition and Restoration of Institutions. Oligui is the cousin of President Ali Bongo Omdimba, who had been declared the winner of the country's presidential election. In a video apparently from the tension in his residence, Bongo called on people to make noise to support him. However, the crowds who took to the streets of the capital celebrated the coup against a dynasty accused of getting rich on the country's resource wealth while many of its citizens struggled. Gabon is located in the western shores of Central Africa and its capital city of Liverpool, a former French colony, Gabon's main economic sector is oil production and export. The nation became a full member of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries in 1975, but terminated its membership in 1995 to rejoin the organization in 2016. Despite its constitution establishes that a president must serve for a seven-year term, former President Omar Bongo Ontin ruled the nation for 41 years until his son Ali was elected after his death in 2009, ensuring the Bongo family a 55-year dominance in the nation. And after the announcement of a military faction seized power in Gabon, videos and pictures of Gabonese people packing the streets to celebrate the ousting of President Ali Bongo Ondimba. In Libreville, crowds cheer as soldiers pass by as they voice their concord with the mutinous forces that now put an end to the 55-year rule of the Bongo family. The military takeover also comes as people and the troops question the elections of August 26 and the former leader announced the results. This is the sixth coup of the time in an African country in the last three years. In Niger, several hundred women demonstrated in front of the French military base in the capital Niamey with kitchen utensils and brooms demanding the departure of French soldiers from Niger. Banging plates, spoons, and other kitchen utensils together, the demonstrators tried to attract the attention of the press in the country. It is not the men, they say, it is Nigerian women who do not want French troops in the country. They also carry anti-French posters. The women's demonstration is preceded by others demanding the same, the departure of French troops from the country. More than 1,500 French soldiers are still present in the former French colony. They defy our governments, they defy our laws, and they who call themselves Democrats do not respect democracy. That's why we women saw that the men insisted. They persisted. We plan to change the order of departure, to bring out our utensils, to make noise so the message can pass, that they say that it's not the men, that is all the Nigerians who demand the departure. We are committed to really saying no to the presence of the French military base here in Niger. We are fed up. We did not say the authorities or something, but the French military bases. We do not want any more here in Niger. Former Secretary General of South Africa's ruling African National Congress launched a new left-wing party, the African Congress for Transformation, ahead of general elections next year. As Mago Shule, a close ally of former President Jacob Zuma, was kicked out of the ANC this year over corruption allegations but remains popular with parts of the left-leaning electorate. And they say the move could further dilute for support for the ANC. The ruling party has been in power since the advent of democracy in 1994. However, polls suggest it could see its vote drop below 50% in the 2024 elections. 
Marshall is facing charges of corruption, fraud, and money laundering related to the alleged investment in public funds earmarked for the removal of asbestos from government built homes. Here today, we are now going to announce a new ship for freedom. And I want to say to all South Africans, here is a ship of freedom. Come along and join us and all those who are weary and politically abused. We are here because we have suffered collective betrayal as a people and a nation at the hands of the people who claim to be our leaders. We have been sold out with few pieces of silver. We have come to the end of this news program. You can find these and many other stories on our website, tesolenglish.net. Also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Tesla English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.